All right guys, today we're gonna to be doing a video talking about the smallest handgun or how small is too small when it comes to EDC firearms or really realistically how small of a handgun should you carry. Now, if you've probably noticed by me doing a lot of my EDC updates on the channel and by and large talking about EDC handguns as a rule, you know that I probably have just a few of them and I do feature quite a few on the channel, but a lot of them are around the same size and honestly that is kind of um i would say on purpose but in a way that i do like smaller handguns and this fn 509c tactical is the smallest one that i personally have to like that i actually carry um and i've definitely struggled like back and forth about like what realistically should i carry what is what how small is too small and really you know trying to make the case for you know, the realistic application of a firearm. And I guess like in the end, why do we carry firearms? And, you know, letting that kind of predicate um, my, my carry more than just trying to go for a smaller handgun. Because I think, I guess for me and my kind of experience, you know, when I started to really uh, CCW, I started off with a Glock 19. Of course, not this exact Glock 19, not this fancy, but I started off with a Glock 19. And I think that the 19, it's, it's definitely the most popular pistol in America, especially for CCW. And it's really because it is a good size, has good capacity and all of that stuff. But uh, it, that gun led me or got me thinking of like, what is really the best size of gun to carry? And so, you know, that's kind of what I wanted to try to break down in this video is kind of my experience and ultimately my conclusion to, you know, having carried or CCW'd multiple handguns over the course of years and why I tend to actually not go for very small firearms. So first off, I should say that, you know, I think after you've CCW'd for a while and, you know, you feel comfortable with handguns, I think there's an inclination a lot um, to go for smaller handguns, whether it's because they're more comfortable. For me, I like that they're easier to conceal, but ultimately I have always shied away unless, and I will talk about exceptions where this gun does come into play, but I've always kind of shied away from that because for me, I'm not saying that I don't, uh, you know, want comfort or that I like to be in pain. But the fact of the matter for me is it never really sat right for me that, you know, I should be leaning towards a gun where I have to sacrifice capacity, controllability, um, and, you know, do those really core fundamentals for shooting um, for a gun that's easier to carry. And while many people will make the counter argument that, you know, you should carry, you know, you should have a gun that you want to carry so that you'll always have it on you. Similar to, you know, survival knives. You know, you want to have a knife for survival that you will have on you at all times because that's the best knife for survival. So the similar rule applies for handguns, right? But um, ultimately, like I said, it never quite sat right with me. So I ended up going from a Glock 19 to a Glock 19X. Now, part of that was in due to, at the time that I got this, you know, it was, COVID was really kicking off, riots were kicking off, and we just genuinely didn't know how America was going to go. And so because of especially riots, I wanted a gun that had a 20 round magazine capacity. Now this is it with a 17 round magazine, but uh, you know, you can easily get 19 round magazines for a Glock 19X. And so with this guy sitting in here, you know, with a round in the chamber would give you 20 rounds of nine mil. And for me, 20 rounds of nine mil, it's like, I like that personally from there. Now, once again, I did continue to have thoughts about, you know, should I get a, a SIG P365? Should I get a Glock, you know, 43X? Should I get, you know, a uh, FN 509C? Should I get a Glock? Should I get an FN 509C like we see here? You know, should I go with a gun that is more compact? Now, initially I was like, yes, that's what I want because I want something that is more carryable, especially with um, lighter gear, like workout stuff. And so that's where I ended up leaning towards, you know, a 509C. But still, even with my daily carry, I did not want to actually sacrifice the Glock 19x and to be honest with the glock 19x 
for a lot of, at least in my case, what I wore, um, especially being here in Alaska, we have a little bit more leeway with, you know, no one's really going to bat a lash if you're walking around, you know, downtown Fairbanks or even downtown Anchorage. And, you know, you look like you're wearing adventure apparel, you know, because Alaska is so wild and untamed by and large that, you know, a lot of people wear, you know, um, cargo pants and, you know, kind of looser fitting um clothing because that's kind of the style here you know so for me you know I found within a reason it was always applicable or that I could really always carry a Glock 19x so while the Glock 19x wasn't always the most comfortable option and sometimes I had to adjust it to make it conceal better for me personally um, I really did enjoy the fact of having once again that 20 round magazine capacity but not just that too I also really enjoyed having the shootability of this and it's undeniable uh between these three handguns, this is definitely the easiest to shoot of them all. And of course, you know, that is primarily due to the longer grip so that you can get a more full proper grip on this handgun, especially two-handed, but even one-handed feels very comfortable. And uh, of course, with that extra control ability comes an extra ability to, or the ability to more easily get follow-up shots. So breaking it down, the 19X for me is where I really settled for the most part. Now it is definitely a larger handgun, but these are the biggest reasons as to why I chose this to be my primary go-to handgun. And granted, I do run my 19 now a little bit more, primarily because of the red dot and the kind of setup. But uh, for me, I think the 19X is kind of the peak for EDC handguns. And really this is why. I think the 19X is the peak for EDC handguns. And honestly, Here's why I think that we should try to, in the EDC community especially, but as a whole, try to EDC more full-sized handguns. So the first reason I think, and what I kind of learned from the Glock 19X, is that full-sized handguns, or at least full-sized frames, are far easier to conceal than you might initially think. And uh, hear me out on this one. So if you have a Glock 19 versus a 19X, you can see I'm trying to hold them at roughly the same height. But you can see that, yes, this 19X is longer in its frame, but it's only about an inch, inch and a half longer. And when you actually have this concealed under a proper garment, uh, really, especially when it comes to appendix carry, it's not that much harder or that much noticeable or more noticeable than ca carrying a Glock 19. Now, where you might see some noticeable difference is say this 509C, you'll notice that there is a pretty big difference between those two. However, However, it's really not that bad. And once again, I think a lot of people, you know, when you pull out your ruler, this thing is going to be, you know, probably two, two and a half inches less in frame length than this. But in practice, when it's actually on your body, it's not really that noticeable. To be completely honest, like at least for me, when I was finding out like practically, you know, concealing these handguns on my body appendix carry, they really were not that. This did not print any more than the FN 509, any more than the Glock 19. So other reasons to EDC a full-sized handgun. Now, even something like a Glock 17, I think would be a great option for this regard. So once again, we talked about the aforementioned greater capacity. This thing flush fits 17 round magazines. Of course, it will easily carry the 19 round magazines I just showed off. So immediately greater capacity. And while capacity isn't everything in a gunfight and isn't going to make or break the situation, no one will ever complain about having too many bullets in a firefight ever. So greater capacity is there. The other thing is if you run a full size, like say Glock 17, where you're gonna gain a few inches in the barrel, you're gonna have greater velocity out of your bullets. So what that means is that say, especially with things like hollow points, they're going to hit a better velocity. And when they do hit their target they will expand more fully basically what i mean by this is within reason hollow points you want them to be going faster so that when they hit their target they're more likely to mushroom to a proper um, diameter so when you shoot a um, hollow point out of a shorter barrel it's less likely to it will expand but it will uh, expand usually to a smaller diameter so that's what you're usually going to expect to see out of you know ballistic performance and what does that mean 
at the end, like in layman's terms. If you have a hollow point that doesn't expand to its fullest diameter, it's ultimately not discharging as much energy. That's the whole reason we use hollow points in self-defense is so that one, A, they'll stop in the target, and two, that they will discharge their energy. That's why handguns have hollow points is because a handgun generates less ballistic energy than a rifle caliber bullet or a rifle caliber or just rifle in general I should say. Okay so then of course next naturally and once again kind of going back to the grip length when you have a handgun that has a full-sized grip length you are going to have the better you will have a better ability to control your firearm. Now, once again, controlling a firearm is kind of a two-part process where not only does that mean that your firearm is going to not jump around on you as much when you're firing it, but it also makes follow-up shots much easier. In addition to with reduced recoil or at least reduced felt recoil, people who don't have as much experience or don't practice as much with firearms will better be able to control and get rounds on target with a gun that's not jumping all over the place. Now for me, I practice with these guns several times a month. So for me, this that point is less you know important for me because I know what to expect if I do pull this gun out to shoot it because I shoot it frequently enough to know. The next part is going to be, and unfortunately I don't have a great example because I try to avoid these guns in general, but with things like the Glock 43 for instance, and uh, especially like the earlier generation to small handguns, like the uh, subcompact one and a half stacks, um, that, like the P365 and stuff, you see less options on them. So generally with a full sized handgun, and once again, kind of don't have a great option here, but, or a great, um, examples to show because this little my smallest handgun is purposely I got an FN 509 tactical uh, C tactical so I had all of these options on it but um, or the ability to add options onto it but generally with smaller handguns you will not see things like pick rails or you know light laser rails you won't see things like threaded barrels you won't see things like optics cuts uh, for um, sights for red dots. So once again, this is a kind of poor example because this one has all of those options and it's a poor example because I won't buy a small handgun that doesn't have all of those options. So that's why I, that kind of is what it is. But um, ultimately, once again, going back to it, you know, full-sized handguns like, you know, Glock 17s with an MOS cut are going to come with options and the ability to add lights, lasers, you know, aftermarket suppressor height sights, um, threaded barrels. And of course, they'll come with optics cuts for you to add a red dot optic so you can add more options to your handgun. Now, once again, similar to... Um, Similar to recoil control, you know, is it the end of the world to not have those options? No. All it means when you have things like a light and a laser and or, you know, light and or laser have a red dot sight on it, you have, you know, a threaded barrel, it just gives you options. With a threaded barrel, you can put a compensator on the end. With a red dot sight, follow-up shots, once again, are faster, easier, and much easier to take under duress. You know, with a light laser system, it gives you the ability to not only, once again, ease your target acquisition, uh, but it know, you know where you're shooting. So it just makes the process of shooting simpler. And while, once again, you know, that sounds like it's not a huge deal when you're under stress, when you're in fear of your life, you know, having the easiest possible system to get good, reliable hits is going to be key. So that's why I think running a full-sized handgun is something that I think if you have the option to, you should try for your concealed carry kind of life. Um, I really think that full-sized handguns are the better way to go than compacts and especially subcompacts. And, uh, once again, I think a lot of people will find, if you do try this, that full-sized handguns are a lot more concealable than you might actually think. And then, once again, they give you all of these cool um, benefits of, like I said, increased velocity, increased controllability, increased options, all of that fun stuff that you get. So, anyways, that is what I think about what is the smallest handgun you should EDC. As always, God bless, and I'm out.